Hey everyone, welcome to episode 40. My name is Keshav and I'm the producer. Today's episode is with Zhilu Chen, who is a 2022 Dalhousie University graduate and current Masters of Accounting and Finance student at the University of Toronto. She joined Sam to discuss her decision to move from China, where she's from, to Canada as an international student, and also shared some of what it's like to study in a new country, and also move from Halifax to Toronto for her master's program, and her journey from, from studying arts, a totally different subject from accounting, uh, to then being in a business program. I think this is a really great episode if uh, you're new to Canada and you're trying to get acclimatized uh, at a new university that you're unfamiliar with. And so if you're coming to Dow for the first time and learning how to get acclimatized and, and used to a new society, a new way of living and a new school, this is a really great episode uh, to listen to. So with that, thanks and enjoy. Welcome, Zhilu Chen. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So, first of all, um, how do we know each other? Um, Sam is my professor, and I first time meet with time uh, meet with Sam is online <laughs> during the <laughs> COVID time, and yeah, for I remember it's for the cost management course, and I just want to reach out like. You know, like in COVID time, I just wanted to speak with somebody <laughs> sometime. And I really, because all the course is online, so I just found, oh, how can I keep in touch with my classmate? How can I keep in touch with my professor? So in, in that time, I send a lot of email. And, and I think you are really open to the email, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I was thrilled. I was like, oh, we got some email. <laughs> it was yeah, great. Be because 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 I know a lot of my classmates send you email and get with with you like at that time. Yeah, yeah it's very communicative, <laughs> even if COVID time. Yeah, no, and and the thing is, like you mentioned, you wanting to reach out to your profs, and like we wanted we want to talk to you too, but we also yeah. realized that you know. Being online, you know, yes. Uh, so it would have been what? What would have been? Uh, like winter of twenty twenty one, I believe. Yes, and yes. Wow, time flies. Um, so it would have been or winter, yeah, winter twenty twenty one. And you know, we know that students, um, especially because your group would have been third year coming off of co op, and for many people, maybe the first or second kind of round of online classes, we didn't just want to like pepper you all with like questions. So I tried really hard to just be like, hey, this is me, I'd love to talk to you. And then sit back and while you see it, a number of students reached out, they did and we were able to communicate, but you were one of the first, um, that group. And it was really nice to kind of establish uh, that connection, you know, and not, not try to overwhelm, you know, anybody, but just kind of have that, you know, that through line. And it was, it was so lovely. And I was so thrilled that then we came back in person in the fall. And I remember you met up with me and it was, it was like, wow, like this, is, this is you. Yeah. <laughs> and that was yeah, really because really like sometimes like, like we do not know how the person is like behind the screen or like, so when you send the email, I feel I can communicate with you because I think you communicate with us every time with some smiling face at the end in the email. And I found, okay, I want to reach out to her. And you also share your dog <laughs> in the in a bright space. So I found, oh, I got a dog too. And I have a dog, I have a puppy, and I want to share same experience. I want to share like my life with you. So that is why sometimes it's very hard like to to get in touch like online because you don't know what the people think or sometimes for me I'm a little bit afraid of that people may don't want to like get this kind of email because I don't know people do want like get a personal chat with me or not so but mm -hmm. when you're sharing your things like actively I will share my and I feel maybe you are open to that and I will try so yeah totally. it's very important that like you get in touch with us at very first. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, 
of course I'm, I'm biased, but like kudos to you for reaching out. I do remember the dog picture and then, you know, keeping, keeping in touch, you know, doing the schoolwork, you know, asking the questions, you know, getting to know each other a little bit personally, and then translating that to in-person in the fall. And then, you know, when we went back online in the winter, you know, staying in touch and, you know, um, being open to different opportunities. Like I was super thrilled um, when you uh, decided to be part of the marketing team to give back and be a cost management marker the year after you were a cost management student. So um, tell me a bit about how that was, because at that time you were then one of my advanced accounting students and my cost marker providing feedback to the student that you were the year before. So how, how was juggling all of that in your fourth year? It's very interesting <laughs> because I just done that course year before and I'm a student and I think Anna is also my PA at that time. <laughs> with, like she is my colleagues at the first fourth year in my evaluation team and so it's pretty interesting to see that because like the perspective has changed like when I in third year I found okay this is always like new things for me and I just want done my assignment and it's really interesting that you delivered assignment in a video form is really interesting because I do not get any other assignment like that, always typing or handwriting. But yeah, video, just a short video. Sometimes it's very surprised to like you delivered assignment like that. And as a student, I found I want to do that. It's just a short video. And I sometimes maybe can, I can share more or sometimes because for me, if I can talk or I can speak out what I learn, I really get that. If I just think in my mind or in my brain, I just sometimes I forget. <laughs> Absol no, absolutely. They say that clear writing is a product of clear thinking, but that clear speaking is a product of clear writing, which is then a product of clear thinking. So absolutely. Um, very intentional. And thank you for kind of encapsulating all that. Yeah. Um, I want students to have, you know, a rubric where you know they're they can see okay this is what i can do in order to get the grade but then the really the big metric behind it is you know hearing yourself talk about the concepts hearing them come out of your brain and onto your screen and some students i'm pretty sure I, you know they they wrote down what they were going to say and then they said it which is okay too right which is great because yeah. it all comes through to kind of that mastery and that confidence because in an interview, you cannot think your answers. In an interview, yeah. you often can't write your answers. So, you know, if we can kind of get practice doing that. And then, so when you went through it um, with Anna as your TA and then transitioning mm -hmm. to Anna as your colleague, um, how was it going from providing the assignments via video to providing feedback to students via video? Yeah, that's that's the most interesting part <laughs> because it's, it's like at the beginning, I feel it's pretty hard because the students are pretty smart sometimes. Yeah. They ask some <laughs> question, it's pretty tough for me and I need to learn again. And so sometimes I feel, okay, I studied this thing before and I can do my exam and I can do my assignment by myself, it's okay. But for now, as a marker, I need to give them feedback and I need to tell them what I'm thinking and how I understand understand about that material. So yes, yeah, just a transaction because like when you learn it as a student, it's an input of the material. But when I do the marker thing, the evaluation and feedback, I found it's an output and it's very different method and thinking logic in here. Uh, yeah, and I found I got deeper understanding on that, on the similar material, because you need to let others know what you are thinking, and you need to reorganize your logic and all the material you, are lear you learned at that time and to make others understand you. So <laughs> it's very hard. And also, it's very, very good 
to see. I don't feel that when I was a student because I just record a video. I just found one one. But when I do the mark marking thing, I found like I can see like twenty four students, different faces, and I found okay, that's very interesting. That's very excited, and I also a little bit have a communication inside, and I really enjoy to give the feedback. In video too, and I normally I can record like two minutes, or I got the longest one I take is five minutes. <laughs> so, so yeah, I really like to to doing that, and it was really like sometimes people the students say yeah hello uh, evaluation team or hello teams I felt like oh that's super good yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, the amount of feedback that I heard from the students was like, wow, like I got a video back. Like I gave a video, I got a video back. And then I got to meet different members of the evaluation team. And they, yeah, I, so when I heard from a number of them via email or uh, sometimes they would book uh, Zoom chats, like it was really nice seeing um, our team who worked super well together and seeing that connection because, you know, as we as we're in like this, I, I hope I can call it post COVID time, you know, we really get to have an active part of the narrative of what does work look like? What does learning look like? What, how do I want to contribute? How do I want to grow? So anytime that we can get exposure uh, to same or similar material in a number of different ways, and then interact with it and figure out how do I want the next stage of my life to look uh, as an educator, it's super rewarding for me to hear you um, speak about your growth and while growing other students, right? Because it's it's a pretty cool thing. I've I've had the pleasure of working alongside uh, colleagues that were once my teachers and once my mentors, and um, and also be able to develop develop teams. And it's just it's a cool thing that we get to do. And I'm not sure if it is unique to accounting and finance. Um, I can't speak to other disciplines, but I'm just very grateful uh, for the amount that we're actually able to connect over something that outsiders might think of like, oh, accounting, so numbers or oh, black and white. It's like, nah, there's a, there's a lot to it. Numbers, right? Numbers, finance, um, <laughs> communication, it's all of it. Yeah, I totally agree. So we know how we met, but I want to, hmm. First, I want you to tell me where you're at right now. So you graduated uh, in just a few months ago, just a few, few months ago, and tell yeah. me what you've done since then. And then I'm going to ask you to take me back all the way to how you became, uh, how we, how you came to Dal. So first, Jilu, uh, mm -hmm. what have you done since you graduated in May? Yeah. I my, like I say like my final exam is in April 22nd and I start directly start my master program at May the 4th somewhere like a Monday <laughs> of the May I cannot really remember which day but I start my master program just directly after I graduate even I do not receive my confirmation letter from the house <laughs> to say I'm graduate like but yeah uh, I do master of finance and accounting in University of Toronto now and that program is a CPA and CFA combined program and I just done my final exam for my summer term this Monday <laughs> yeah 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 it's very oh. happy for that Oh, okay. So you didn't even get your confirmation of graduation. You finished your last exam on the 28th. You start in a whole new province in a master's program, May the 4th, like, and you just wrote your final exam. So you have definitely, um, you know, had a very eventful, very eventful summer. And I definitely want to dig into that. Um, I guess first, like, what was like, what was it like landing in, like, or, land, you know, being in Toronto, like, with all of that? Like, when was your first time that you were able to, like, go to dinner or do something, like, social with your group or see the city? Or, like, what was that first thing like? Because Toronto is not like Halifax. It's a little different. Yeah, it's super big. And I do not know how to drive. 
So I'm not a driver and I do not have lessons. So most of the time I depend on Uber or my friends or bus. <laughs> yeah. And I live in Scarborough. And so, yeah. And most of the time I stay in Scarborough and Markham. But yeah, for because like the downtown Toronto is too far away yeah. from where I live to the downtown Toronto, I think I need to spend like at least 30 minutes for the, for the Uber, for taxi, not yeah. only for- So how is Scarborough? Is that similar size to Halifax? Like, does it feel closer to Halifax or? I think it's still very, it's bigger and it's more, con- because I found Toronto is like, they center us in the Toronto city and expand to the city around the Toronto. So yeah, the city around the city of Toronto is always very, also very complex and very comprehensive and big because the highway is linked all the things together. And yeah, I just moved from Halifax and yeah, I found at first, I found the, the, the life path in here the speed, I speed it up, really. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm from the capital of China. I'm from Beijing. And Beijing is also very, very busy. And I got in Halifax when I was an undergrad. And at that time, I, still, I found everything slowed down. And I cannot, like, figure out how can I spend my life. But when I want like figured out how can I spend my life in Halifax and I got in Toronto and the past speed it up yeah. and I feel okay. <laughs> and and, I, and yeah, at least I used like two weeks, two weeks to just to normalize that. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's a little bit hard, but yeah, I just do some, when I feel very, uh, very, I don't know what to do, or I feel a little bit confused about what my life. Normally, I just do some reading or hang out with my friend, because my friends, they, some of them, are come from Toronto, and they know how to live in here, and they give me a lot of suggestion. So at that time, I feel pretty good, and I said, okay, the city is like that. Okay, the city. The people in this city is like that. And when I take the Uber, the driver also sometimes get chat with me. And I, and I know something about the city. And I know because some Uber driver, they're also international. And yeah. they got very, some similar experience with me. And I, some chat is very valuable for me. And I found they got like similar sense and I can sometimes copy paste <laughs> their, yeah. their sense or their feelings. Yeah, so it's very, like for me, I found if you get into a city that you are not very familiar with, I, you can just go out and chat with some people <laughs> in the city. So I, for me, I it's like that. I love that. And would you say that by nature, you are introverted or extroverted? Because I, I have a guess, but. Yeah, I think I'm in the middle. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I feel if, if the environment or atmosphere, I feel not very comfortable or I'm not very, like I'm a county student and I learn finance and I'm very sensitive on data. If this, I get into some networking or I get into some situation that I, this field, I can say something or I got very familiar with, I will talk about and I want to sharing. But if I got into an event that do not, I do not have too many background or let's say maybe you, you hit me into uh, like a, in the biology event. <laughs> I feel like, okay, I will not speak. I will just stay there and listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I love, love it. I love, I love the advice on how to get acclimated uh, in, a, in a jiffy because yeah, if uh, 
I have to say that you have probably one of the tightest turnarounds that I've ever heard of. So if you can do it, uh, I'm convinced that other people can make that transition and, and make it happen that, that quick. So Zulu, I want to take it back a little bit and explore your undergrad. So you mentioned you are from Beijing. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about, uh, you know, coming to Dalhousie, coming to Canada as an international student and, you know, eventually going to the Bachelor of Commerce and selecting to be an accounting major. I want to hear about it from, quote, the beginning. Yeah, my story is a little bit different with the people like in the same age because I learned specifically learn art in my high school and I'm an uh, art student and I take the art examination in China and I really want to get in art and also like fine art and design industry when I was in high school. So I contribute a lot in that. I, I feel like I spent more than five years to practice on how to do the design and how to like learn about this industry in that time. And I, yeah, but when I really get into this industry and I get into the university um, for art, I feel that mm, this field is not very suitable for me. At that time, I feel, okay, I like it before. I like this field. But when I really learned that in a deeper sense, I feel that, well, this is not what I want. And I really don't want to treat as a, as a hobby. And I, I feel I learn art or I learn design because I feel happy. And I feel like when I do something, I want to try something, I feel like, okay, this is mine. And I just get some thinking, crazy thinking or something like that. And I just paint it out. And I feel very glad on doing that. But when I take it as a work, I feel, okay. <laughs> It's not, it's very different. And also art is not like mathematic or statistic. You're right. The answer is right, then you're right. It's not pretty much like that. It's really depend on what people feel on you, your design or your artwork. Different people get very different thinking. And I found that time I feel pretty confused because you know me that I'm I'm a very logic oriented person. I need to know the answer, and I need to know what is right and what is wrong. And I get the logic, then I do the thing. But I, at that at that time, I paint something, and different people give me very different evaluation on that, and I got super confused. <laughs> so so I explore because I paint something, and when people come, he found that thing is super good but another people come and he said like i found is a totally garbage i can say that it's not like yeah they are very like very two very extreme comments on similar artwork so at that time i feel super confused and i'm but yeah maybe it's my problem or my logic in here because I know most of my friends still in this industry, they they got very high agreeableness and openness. But for me, I need the logic behind. No, I need to and, know why you think this is bad or why you yeah. think it is good. <laughs> I need to know the reason. I'm this kind of type of person. So that is why I feel maybe I'm not very suitable in this industry. Well, yeah. I think you bring up a really good point that, you know, pursuing things uh, that are in line with your passion, um, sometimes when you do them for work, um, it, it, I don't want to say it like loses some of it, but, you know, sometimes when it's, how do I say this, when you're doing something that you really like to do, but mm -hmm. then you're trying to do it for your soul, you know, for your income, for your schooling, for, and you said like, go deeper. Uh, sometimes it loses a little bit of that, what makes you happy. And especially if for you, like you like the logic, you want to know, okay, well, why about this? Or, you know, what about this? What can I fix? How can we use feedback? And people are just like, I don't know, like, or, you know, I, just it's like, 
wait a minute. Um, and so there is something to be said about pursuing passions as passions and keeping that as a passion and also pursuing your career that maybe takes this other skill set that you have and develops other skill sets that you become passionate about as well. So you can have your art, you can have your, you know, finance and accounting career, and they don't have to be, you know, at odds, but they can kind of complement the life that you're creating for yourself. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at that time, I just, yeah, I, maybe that time I'm too young. I can, if I in the same situation for now, I feel it's okay because different people get different comments. And I feel like, because I feel like normally in the work, in the accounting work or finance work, sometimes you do something and different people give you different feedback. So it's very okay for me for now. But in that time, I feel super struggle on that. Fair. Like, yeah, That's because I put all my effort in that. And and I don't know, sometimes, like maybe for the finance or the accounting, you can tell this is debit, this is credit. You just get it, it's wrong. You cannot debit this. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but yes, like for artwork, you don't know. Like just sometimes maybe people don't like the yellow color or maybe, maybe they don't like the blue color. It's, it's pretty it's, just a sense. People don't know sometimes. what they, yeah. why they don't like something. So yeah, my question... My question then is, how did you go, like, when did you, when did you change and when did you make that change? And how did that, mm -hmm. how did that evolve to your time at Dalhousie? Yeah, like at that time, I just told my parents, I'm, I'm done, I'm done with this industry. I want to change someplace. And I have never sought to study abroad before. And I have never sought to come in Canada at that time. And yeah, at that time, I think I remember is December uh, or somewhere like December 2016 or January 2017 at that time. And most of Canadian university uh, like uh, application, their deadline is around April or March. And and for the America University, because my sister, my younger sister, she is applied for uh, the America University. And, but I do not do any exam for the US University. So I cannot, I'm, avail I'm not very available for like for the US University. And I, I just tell my father, I just want to go out. I want, just want to change some, something. And I want to leave by myself not economic like independently for now i can i still cannot live like independently in economic side in finance side but yeah i just want to mentally live independent with just without my parent <laughs> so yeah i just and my father father have a very tough argue with me at that time but i just want to go out and to see the world how other part of the world like operate or how people in that country life left like how they make living for that so at that time canadian university gave me the opportunity and uh, i found i i can give like give a try and i so i just directly applied to canadian university and the dalhousie because my score at that time is not very high for my uni for my high school score and also I do not get any language test at that time so yeah I got a lot of shortage on the application at that time so because it's just a rush application for two months because like for my younger sister she prepared to go to U.S. university start at her first year in high school like wow. she prepared for that more than three years but I prepared for that just three months or least in three months so oh, I feel like your experience is closer to like my experience being from Canada applying to Canadian universities like I was kind of like oh I don't know I hit grade 12 and I was like yeah I guess I'll like, apply to universities now yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I just applied yeah, yeah. Um, um, and yeah Dalhousie is the one that give me the opportunity so I really appreciate Dalhousie can give me the opportunity at that time and accept me <laughs> yeah yeah because if I do not get that opportunity I will not be like that 
Fair. So, yeah. Fair. So you come, um, so you get accepted, you start in September of 2017 then. Mm-hmm. And like, how, how was it being in, being an international student? Cause um, you know, I'm about to teach uh, first years in just over two weeks. And, you know, I'm going to have a room full of people that, you mm-hmm. know, maybe just arrived in Canada. So, you know, let me know what was the experience um, coming and se- like, you know, and starting yeah. school and starting a life away from your parents. Yeah. Start from like 2017 because I do not have language test. So I directly go to the EAP program for the language learning. And I um, finally get into my undergrad, my bachelor degree in 2018. So yeah, I started as May because at that time, because I have struggling on my artwork once. So I really want to learn more. So I got older in the similar grade, like for me, because my classmate is normally born in 20, 20 something like that, but I'm like 1998, <laughs> I'm older two year for them. But, but yeah, but so I sometimes, and I have an experience is very different with them. So at that time, I know what I want. I know I need to grab this opportunity and learn it. And I just want to know and I want to expand the network at that time because very different with other people. I know nobody in Canada, the whole Canada. It's just myself. I just know myself. And I, my parents don't give me any support because like if I live in China or of people I know, like my younger sister, they prepare for their university to study abroad. They will get some connection like from their parents. But for me, it's just like a sudden decision and my parent just not give me any support in this kind of side. My father just support me on the financial. And yeah, so for here, like I expand, I know everybody just by myself based on my own network. So this is one thing I really want to tell like for international students, like I know sometimes it's very hard and it's also similar for me. When I just come in Canada, I don't want to speak with other people because I know my English is not good. <laughs> and, and I cannot like smoothly communicate with them. But you see me now, I can even record a podcast. <laughs> yeah. yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. So no, it's no, a big change. So, you know, I'm, I know one language. Um, so I applaud everybody who speaks to me in my one language, especially knowing, um, you know, that they, they have other language or languages. Uh, so I hope anybody listening to this that is nervous about speaking in English, come talk to me, uh, come talk to Gilu, come talk to yeah. find your people, um, because, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm not in a place to necessarily encourage that. So thank you for encouraging them to, to, to practice, to talk because yeah, you are, oh my gosh, you are like, you're teaching in English. You're teaching while a university student uh, TA in English. And yeah, so sorry. I, I'll, I just want to really emphasize right. that. It's so important. Thank you. Yeah. I found it super important. Just, just go out and speak with someone. And I feel most of Canadian people, are pretty open to that. Even sometimes you speak the word wrong, you feel okay. They will not, sometimes of my Canadian friend will just translate my language. <laughs> like I got one girl in my undergrad, like we got like in the team for all the project in the whole four year. And she is very familiar with me because we do the, all the teamwork together. So in the strategy course at the fourth year, sometimes I just cannot express myself. I got a lot of thinking and I got too many perspectives, but sometimes it's hard to just express out. And she just got me and she will translate to that. <laughs> Even sometimes because she know you and she will just feel you. And sometimes she just feel okay, I understand. It's, it's, do you mean this one or this side? So sometimes you will find somebody, you will find somebody will accept you or 
yeah, just talk. Like if you do not talk, you you never know there is a person will be with you or they will. Sometimes people is like that. If you do not share your story like openly or actively, people just will not talk to you. But if just sometimes just a how are you or one sentence, people will open to you. Yeah, sometimes for me, I'm. Sometimes I just want to tell with some people, but I'm afraid maybe they don't want to talk with me. So if you want to talk with me, just say hi or just say how are you doing, how is your day, and I will talk a lot. <laughs> That's <is> fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just a favor, try. Even you don't feel your English is not good, just practice. Or sometime maybe you are just undervalued. Maybe. Because for 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 me, I feel most of Chinese student or international student student their English is is pretty much like very good, and、Absolutely. they can do the chat smoothly. But sometimes they just like maybe they are just not confident. So just trust yourself and speak out. And if you found okay, I can talk with this person. I can chat, and I can pass the course. This is why this is a proof of your English skill. <laughs> yeah. So this、Absolutely. like yeah. So so yeah. Just be brief and be confident on your English for most of international students. And I'm open to chat. If anyone want to reach out me after this podcast, I'm feel free to chat. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I think that is so generous, and I hope. I hope, hope, hope、um, people will take you up on that, and I'm confident. I'm confident you will be having your email,、um, <laughs> email your inbox filling up. So you you started Dal in 2017, and then 2018 is when you start in the commerce program. Is that correct?、Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, so tell me a bit about. You know the highlights,、um, the lowlights, or tell me a bit about you know the things that if you had to go back and give、uh, Julie Chen、uh, some advice,、um, mm-hmm. what would you tell your younger self? And I feel silly saying your younger self because you are you know you are a an inspiring young woman.、Um, <laughs> Not young, young enough now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, like. I found most of my classmates in Dell.、Uh, they participate in a lot of commerce society,、uh, in or clubs when they get into the first year and second year, and they participate a lot in the info session from different company. And it's very important to do that. But for me, at that time, I just I just want to focus on study. So I just. Waste a lot of resource on that 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 Halsey provide me, and I just aware that in my third year or for a fourth year, yeah. So it's a very late to, for me to recognize that. So because like normally for the first year and second year, your course is way more easier than your third year and your fourth year. So just take your time, go out with people, and. Take your time to participate in a case competition or networking event, and to talk with people. Yeah, because I know it's very hard for me. When I still remember the first time I participated in the railway networking night, I'm super nervous. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, I like at that time I really don't know because it's my first time to participate in the in person. And a huge, lot of big firm get involved, and lot of people in there. And yeah, for me, I feel okay. <laughs> I want to stay in the corner and to drink something. For me, I just do not have the confidence or the courage to to do that. But currently, I will speak like I very encourage every first year and second year student to participate in that. Even you don't talk, or even you do not prepare anything for that, just directly go into the company and say something to them. That is the purpose. That the first time you participate in the networking event is not for the networking. For me, it's not 
do not thinking you participate, then you will get work. The purpose is not like that. The net investment should be to expand your network and to know interesting people. Absolutely, know yeah. interesting people. Hey, and for anybody that is sitting here and being like, oh, I want some more tips on networking. Um, I actually interviewed Nathan Laird. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's an episode with Nathan Laird. He is a manager at the Halifax Connector. And we talk mm -hmm. about networking tips from a professional, pretty much professional networker, somebody who is networked all the time because Jilu, I am also like, I can relate with going to networking events um, as a student and being like, okay, I'm going to talk to three people and then I can go home because it's, it's uncomfy, but with practice, it gets better. And I really like, I really want to emphasize what you said. The purpose of networking is not to get a job, it's to expand your network and get to meet some interesting people. That's amazing. Yeah, because like, I really like to talk with senior people. They got a lot of story and sometimes I can learn from them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can avoid some like traps in my life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just just like make yourself comfortable or sometimes if you find yourself is not comfortable or in the networking event you will think that people everybody is people like people who get same always get similar with you like maybe some like hr from the different company they will not always feel very comfortable every time sometimes i found some hr will just stay in a corner, even yeah. there are HR people. So just go find somebody like that or find some similar people like, like that in the event and talk with them, yeah. go for it. And just maybe bring a drink and talk, oh, how are you today? Or like, do you think the food is good today? Or yeah. which company are you from? Or like, like that, it's just a very mm, people oriented conversation don't treat it as a very serious i found sometimes is if you treat it too serious you will get super nervous just like yes. treat it as a chat very normal chat very, so you will be okay absolutely yeah. um and another person who really emphasized the importance of expanding your network and like you said learning things from people so that maybe mm -hmm. you avoid some of the mistakes that they did or you can kind of mm -hmm. gravitate to other things uh, would be Keshav, so our podcast producer. Uh, we also had an episode where he talked about how he expands his network, how he likes to just have fun conversations with interesting people. So yeah, going out without an expectation for them and out an expectation for yourself and go and have fun. Um, I do want to circle back to something that you mentioned, which was um, that your first two years are easier than your next two years. I will say that it might not feel like it when you're in those first two years. So, you know, <laughs> but yeah, like, the because it's, it's broad, like you're learning a lot of things in a lot of like broader categories. Um, so a good kind of good time management um, and making time for the things that are important would probably be themes that I've heard. Do you have any um, advice for time management um, for, for students that maybe maybe you learned throughout your years that could be applied to a first or second year? Yeah, for the time management thing, mm, for me, I got a planner. Yeah. <laughs> because like maybe like very important. Sometimes I forgot something and I need to write on a planner, say maybe today I got a podcast with Sam <laughs> and I need to track on that. So yeah, if you, because like most of professor will give out their like deadline of exam, deadline of ex uh, assignment or deadline of quiz on their syllabus at the very beginning of the semester. So just put that kind of thing on your planner and you will say, okay, this day I got a deadline. This day I got a deadline. Normally it's routine based. So when you see the planner, you will have a common sense of your time that, okay, for this month, I need to done this. Or for this week, at least for this week, I have this uh, work coming through. Or maybe you got too many items on that week. 
or there's something get very busy on a specific line, you will find okay for that week. I got too much thing. I need to like prepare for that week coming up. If not, I do not prepare. I will maybe feel super stressed. So I sometimes if this week maybe one week is not just not very busy or very flexible. I will say maybe next week coming up, is that easy or not? If yes, I will just put some works from other weeks and just take it in uh, in advance. So write down something, or I know a lot of people track on Google Calendar or Outlook as well, or I know there is a software called Microsoft Tags. You, will, you can do that and just track your work and even sometimes you do not get a very detailed like date, but you just know for that week or that month what you need to do, how many work I got. So just give us common sense of what you what are like the tests will coming up and make yourself be more confident and be more flexible when there are a lot of work coming. Because like for the first year, I know a lot of people want to get involved in the communication or society or any like other and everybody is busy so that is why like and also we got some pressures on um, to find our first co-op for the first year and second year so maybe yeah just to track this kind of thing and to prepare for that like for me because i know like for example when i apply for my master program um the most of the first round master program is started in september and at that time i feel okay I, I i do like a lot of research even in the april of that year like last year last year september i start to apply and i start my research on april and i because i need some because sometime i know for the master program, program they need extra test or they need you to fulfill some requirements. So five months or four months is enough for people to have a big change or to prepare something. So I do the research at that time and I feel, okay, this program need GMAT or this program need extra tests. This program need me to at least hit some grade at specific course. So, I got in, I involved in the summer term, I got into my co uh, last co-op in that, at, at that time. And I, during that summer term, I prepare all the things. I do the reference, I participate, and I try to communicate with people at that time. And I do everything in purpose. <laughs> I can yeah. say that because I got to go. I need to fulfill the requirement. I need to at least hit on the line. So yeah so just give you um like a, just think about what big thing coming up because master apply application is a huge thing for me so at least i need to give it like four months for that but like for some assignment not a life change thing just a course <laughs> like for uh, just assignment or quiz at least you need to just think about that at least uh, in advance for one week it's a if an exam coming up at least you need to give two weeks for that love it so i love working with purpose looking mm -hmm. looking at what's going like what's there and working backwards and adjusting the timeline if it's a life event give yourself multiple months and if it's yeah. an assignment give yourself a couple days or a week you know and mm -hmm. and and adjust accordingly and purpose love it yeah yeah, so sometimes I feel like that. I can show you my planner. If yeah. I if I can found something. Like, yeah. Hey, as, as looking for it, I just have a question about time management. Um, I know we were chit chatting a little bit before we got on here. Are you? Do you have a hard cutoff at some time? Because I know we're past what we what we put in our calendars. I'm sorry. Are do you have uh, a hard cutoff? Or are you okay to go for like ten or fifteen more minutes? Uh, yeah, I can like. No, I do not get cut off. I like, I can do. Do, okay. Yeah. Perfect. I want to see this calendar. I want to see this time, sure. this day timer. Um, yeah, this is what I, because I'm starting very busy in April. 
It's a little bit messy here. Yeah. Ah, no, I love it. I love it because it's it's there and you can visually see what times are busier and yeah. what's going to take more, more of your, your yeah, resources. Sometimes I, oh, for like maybe this one for the May because the May is the, the month I graduate. So it's a little bit like not that messy as that. But yeah, you see that I got a month. I got a week not that busy but yeah I feel like yeah because that week is a vacation week <laughs> love it love it well even us recording this podcast it is August 24th and I remember when I reached out to you a few weeks ago or a month ago or something whenever it was uh you were very much like yeah let's do this um my exam is this day which was Monday um my final exams and then you're like I have pocketed time and you sent me a calendar invite and I was like I love this this is this is great you made it easy on me you were communicative and you put it in a time that also worked for you so yeah like loved it I, so I got to see a bit of that calendar in action <laughs> Like for the calendar, I just track everything. I, I just want to track everything because like, I, uh, like initially, I'm not a person like that. <laughs> I'm not a person who can do a lot of time management. Everybody is like that. And everybody is not born as a time manager. No, nobody is born <laughs> like time management. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes like when you get into the third year or fourth, fourth year, I feel like I need to do that <laughs> because like, if you do not do that, you feel super stressed and you sometimes forget some work because that too many things coming up. And at that day, okay, oh, I got a big assignment. Oh, I got a big report. And I thought, oh, I don't want to be like that. So I need to prepare for that. So when I got the syllabus, normally I just go through all the syllabus and see the calendar and see the rubric. So yeah. So that is what I learned from my undergrad and from my fourth year. Yeah, so I highly recommend you, like the student from like first year or second year, you can also do that. Like, so maybe your fourth year or third year will be more flexible on time, at least. Yeah. Perfect. No, that's wonderful. And it's actually something very similar to what Anna, uh, TA Anna does as well um, with all the deadlines. So it's, yeah. And I think something that she developed closer to her fourth year um, or third year. So yeah, getting these habits in first or second year earlier on. Um, we've heard a lot about Gilu as a student, Gilu as the TA, uh, Gilu as the master's student. I wanna know a little bit about what you get up to for fun. Like, what do you like to do um, for fun? For me, my <laughs> friend always saying me I'm a boring person. <laughs> <laughs> no, like because I'm not, I'm a little bit old school. I can say that because, like, I do not catching up on any Netflix video. <laughs> I do not catching up on. I do not see anything about. I do not watch for watch for that. And sometimes because I do not like do any TikTok or something, I'm a little bit old school even I'm not very better for prepare with my parents even my parents have TikTok and my father really familiar with that but I don't <laughs> well I also don't have TikTok so I'm I'm old school <laughs> yeah and also yeah I saw sometime my friend told me some fashion word or some like word from social media I, I really don't know <laughs> I cannot understand that so sometimes the trust led to me yeah, I'm this kind of person. But for me, yeah, my my time like for fun is just I really like to travel. And I just come in Canada for five years, but I have been to Vancouver. I stay in Calgary for one year. I've been to Edmonton and also I'm in Toronto now and also I stay in Halifax and also I Travel to Montreal and also PEI, New Brunswick. Yeah, I have been to most of the big city in Canada. I think I have already traveled to that. And well, there, I haven't there, even been to PEI. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> because like I got a very fun fun thing here. Like I got an interview one time with um local Canadian people and I told him like I 
I'm a traveler. And, and he said, the city I have been to is more than like more than him. Like he is born in Canada and he lives in Canada. He works in Canada, but the city I've been to is more than him. <laughs> and he is older. <laughs> yeah, so it's really interesting. And for China, China got like 34 per lens. And I have been to most of them. I, I, I think I have already at least been to 30 of them because my, my parent is also the person who like travel. So if we got vacation, at least sometime one week, we will just travel around. So <laughs> we cannot stay at home. So <laughs> my yeah. family is like that. That's great. And what do you like to, like, what do you like to do most when you're traveling? Is it like seeing the sights, eating the food, drinking the coffee? Like what's, what's one of your like go-tos? Um, normally, because I play photography, I play it more than 10 years and I also learn art. So sometimes I really like to record. I just, sometimes I just like to work around and by myself and take some photos and sometimes if you take photo people will see you and some people will like just coming up to chat with you so it's very interesting that you chat with different people when i like i have been to france before and i chat with some some people and i learned some knowledge about wine because like france is very familiar with like wine or alcohol or something like that and that is the knowledge that I do not have at that time and they just give me a lot of common sense on that and they talk to me about the grapes different type of grapes different type of wines it's pretty interesting <laughs> and yeah also in the Canada and sometimes I chat with people because Canada is very diverse Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people come in, have a lot of different background and different come from different country. And one time, sometimes I would like, for example, Uber driver. <laughs> I really like to talk with them. And sometimes I know some different kind of perspective from different type of country. Because like something you see on the news is not very real you need to talk with the people inside of that country then you know that so yeah it's very interesting to know different kind of aspect because sometimes i found even the similar people uh, even the people from similar country they hold very different perspective to their country or to the environment that they live in so it's very interesting i just like to talk with the people like that and yeah uh, for me, just for travel, it's just photo and also for the people inside. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. All right, Julu, world traveler, uh, Dal accounting become undergrad, pursuing her master's of finance and accounting. Uh, what are your future plans or what are options you're considering? Nothing like you have a lot of, you know, school ahead of you, co-op terms ahead of you. There's a lot of things out there, but like, what are some things that are, that you're considering that are front of mind? For the future? For yeah. like, okay. Like, because like I say, when I get in my first year, like I take Jenny's course and I love in accounting. And in my second year, I meet Professor Steele if you know him for my legal like for business legal, yes, legal business yes. the law Steele. class yeah. yeah so at that time i feel okay that is perfect i really like just feel i really like the business law <laughs> and i really want to make my works get involved some part of that yeah and so i for now i'm really looking forward to pursuing my career in forensic accounting and do some investigation in financial crime this kind of thing mm, so that makes sense that's for. yeah this is kind of feel I'm really looking for I know it's very specific or some kind of narrow in the industry and I know there do not get a lot of people familiar with that but 
but yeah, I really like that. <laughs> and, and this is kind of my goal. So I try to build up on that. So this is what I will do. I I expect to do this job in maybe in five years in the future. But yeah, this is my career plan. But for myself, yeah, I'm 24 this year. I want to get a family for myself. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe I want to. I will. I, I'm preparing to stay in Canada, uh, if, because I do most of my study and works in Canada, and I'm more familiar with the com- like community in here. Uh, just for myself, even I'm born in China, but I do not get involved in any like work environment in China. So maybe I will work in here, and I. I'm looking forward to maybe stay longer. So yeah, this is my, just a very basic plan for me now. I love it. I love it. And selfishly, I'm happy that you want to stay in Canada. So, um, because that's closer to me. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> and I, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, continue to to learn and grow and develop the life for yourself uh, with the mm-hmm. tools and um, and have fun along the way. So thank you. Thank you too. Um, <laughs> really, really, I really thank you because, like, like I said, like it's very it's hard time for everyone in COVID time. And because of you, I open to chat and yeah, and, and if you and you give me a lot of support on my final year. So oh. so I like to ask all of my guests this question. Mm-hmm. And um we get a lot of range of of answers. So it's another one where I'm gonna put you on the spot. So, Zhilu Chen, what is your definition of success? Mm, I think currently say, because I think, I think definition has changed along with your life experience. But for me, for now, I found success is give yourself a goal, be confident, achieve it, and be hardworking. That is one. Like this is what I think success success will be because for me I found goal is very important because it's give you a direction but you need to be confident and you need to believe in yourself. Confident is always very important. If you do not have any confidence on what you think you will be, or you you do not have confident on on something, you will not have the passion on that. So just be confident on all the things you do and you will achieve that and hard working is also very important in the process that you achieve the goal so yeah so for me for now it's just like that for the success absolutely Whew, um you must make me cry earlier <laughs> so um uh, truly truly thank you um it is just like students, um, you know, where you during COVID, like it's, it was hard on me too, because I love going to a classroom. I love giving a lecture that I've planned. And I, I love seeing the faces. And I love seeing that immediate feedback when it's going wrong. And then I can switch and I can play off of, you know, where are people struggling? Where are people connecting? And having those conversations in a classroom or one-on-one and building those relationships, um, you know, in the classroom, but also outside. So COVID was um, an online teaching when it's a in-person based program, very, very hard for myself, um, just like it was for students. The thing is, it's my job. So it's okay that it's hard for me. It's not okay that it's hard for, for students. So I just want to say like, thank you. Um, both for communicating that, you know, reaching out and showing my personality and, um, you know, providing that pathway meant something. And um, that's why you almost going to fight back the tears um, because we're all doing our best. And it's, it's nice to know when we can have that connection. And I am 
so excited um, with where you brought yourself, so excited where you're going to continue to take yourself and so grateful for you you to come on here, share your experiences, um, provide advice to all learners and provide some tailored advice to the international learners and speak and make those connections and offer that, um, that connection point uh, to them. So Julie Chen, thank you. And um, any final comments or anything else to add before we wrap this up today? Yeah, for the final comment, I found, I just want to say like, for all the students, not only for undergrad, but all the people who listen to this podcast, I found like, I know like people like life sometimes get pretty sucks. <laughs> I know some, some, I know this and everybody is the same and everybody will be in, would be in this same situation. And when life get that, just trust yourself. You will get through it. And I also want to recommend people to um, directly use your use the resource that we have already currently have already have. So because I heard from feedback and heard from like students, they complain about like, oh, I feel pretty tired. I feel like sometimes I don't know how to get into this the, the field that I want to get into or. I feel I don't know how to do it. Just sometimes thinking about what resource you currently have and use it to maximize the value. Like everybody gets limited resource, but the thing is that how can you use it and how to maintain that and how to organize that to make your resource more valuable than the other. And even because like for me, I found if different people get the similar resource different people will use in a different way and find a way that suitable for yourself and sometimes you will find when you use your current resource you will expand the resource and your resource will be more and people is always the best resource you will have like everything is about the people like even you, when you do a study you are investigating people and you are work for people. And so, yeah, like when you think about that, you will be very comfortable on all the things, not only in work or study, you will also like be comfortable in your networking event. Because, because you will think about they're all people, I'm people too. And yeah, and they are similar. And we got sometimes very tough time we got happy time, we got similar time, similar feeling. So yeah, just use the resource and treat everyone as people. Perfect. Couldn't think of a better way to, to wrap this up. Thank you. All right. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs>